If you have a suspended Google Merchant Center account or you want to prevent your account from being suspended, this video is for you. Hey, this is John Horn from Stub Group. We're the number one resource for fixing Google suspensions and policy violations. And we're also one of the top premier Google partner digital advertising agencies in the world. And the reason that I'm able to speak to you about what to do to fix Google Merchant Center suspensions is because we've been hired by countless businesses over the last decade to help them fix their Google Merchant Center and Google Ad account suspensions. And so we've learned how to deal with Google policies, what to do, what not to do over time. And I'm going to share some insights with you today. Now, I'd like to be able to say, here's a, a one-stop shop solution to all your problems. Follow this checklist of 10 things and you will for sure fix your problem. Unfortunately, it's not that simple because often what we see is there are different nuances with situations. And so we have to take what we understand about best practices and what to fix. And then we have to figure out the, again, those unique nuances of each situation and do both kind of the art and the science of understanding how to comply with Google's policies and how to fix a specific situation. But that said, hopefully what I'm going to share with you today will be helpful to you if you are experiencing a problem. So let's go ahead and go through um, Google's policies. I'm going to highlight the ones that most commonly are referenced when Google says you have violated a policy and suspends your account. And we'll talk through some of the nuances of each one. So first of all, under Google's heading of prohibited content, they have a couple different options here. Um, counterfeit goods is one that comes up, and this is one of the more common suspensions that we see when businesses hire us to get them unsuspended. Essentially, Google is saying that they think that you are selling counterfeit goods. Um, most often we'll see this pop up for resellers. Let's say people in the luxury space, maybe luxury watches, luxury handbags, things like that. And so they've got um, the names of various um, designers or various brands on their website because they're reselling those products. And Google sees those things and flags the account saying, hey, we think you might be selling counterfeit goods. So there's a couple of things to watch out for. Um, one is if you have really massive discounts on your products, especially compared to someone being able to purchase those same products elsewhere on the web, um, then that can flag you because that is a signal for Google that there might be something fishy going on, even if there isn't, even if there's a genuine reason for why you're able to present such a discount. So watch out for big discounts on your website if you're flagged for counterfeit goods. Um, additionally, you need to make it very clear on your website uh, that you are not the brand that you are reselling. So if you're selling Nike here and you are not Nike, you want to have disclaimers on your website, probably in your footer, on your product pages, making it very clear what your relationship is and how you are able to sell genuine Nike products through your website. Now, sometimes we'll see people get flagged for counterfeit goods and they're the actual manufacturer. They're like, how can it be counterfeit? We literally manufacture these ourselves. And there are sometimes other signals and things that Google's looking at that make them think that they're counterfeit. Um, if you know, you're using brand names or things that are similar to other trademarks, even if they're not identical. Um, or again, if you're having you know, massive discounts, like I mentioned, or sometimes it could be something different. And often if it's something different, it has more to do with the legitimacy of your website kind of your business presence and Google may be thinking you're not well enough established. Um, and so there's some things that you can do. Again, it's, you know, use customer reviews, real customer reviews, um, get Google My Business or Google Business Profile, link that to your Google Merchant Center account. There's different things like that you can do to try and prove legitimacy to Google. So kind of figured it's, it's a tricky one, but we have helped many people um, figure it out and get unsuspended. In terms of other ones that are, are common, um, these other here's, they, they happen. They're not as common though. I'm going to go down to misrepresentation because this is by far the most common reason for merchant center suspensions. It's also probably the vaguest. Um, it's kind of Google's catch all reason for why a merchant center might be suspended. And ultimately Google is saying that they think that users may be misled by the content in your ads or on your website. They ex give examples of promotions that um, you know, prompt users to initiate purchase, a download, et cetera, without first providing all relevant information. They also mention promotions that represent, represent you or your products in a way that's not accurate, realistic, and truthful. At the end of the day, it's really them saying, hey, we think there's something wrong with either your business model or how you're presenting information on your website or you're not presenting enough information on your website. 
that last point is often critical. So um, many businesses will come to us and they are not using the necessary policy pages on their website. So Google makes it very clear, you need to have a refund policy, you need to tell people what happens if they return a product, whether they can or can't return a product, um, what your shipping policies are, how much is it gonna cost, how long is it gonna take to get that product to them, how long is your handling time, what's your cutoff date, you know, basically all the things that you would wanna see, um, all the questions that you would want answered as a consumer going to your website, Google's looking for those same, same things. And if you're not clearly articulating those things on your website and also linking to them in the appropriate places from your Google Merchant Center account, then those are things that can flag Google to say you're, you're being misleading or not providing enough information. So make sure you've got all the policy pages you can think of to add. Make sure everything is very clear and easy to access. And then there's lots of other things that we've seen trigger this suspension as well. Not having sufficient contact information on your website is an important one. We've seen businesses, again, who've hired us for help and they haven't had a contact page with clear contact information, um, ideally with a physical address for the warehouse or the headquarters of the business. Things like that are very important and helpful in proving legitimacy to Google and making sure that Google is comfortable at the end of the day, that when they send people to your website from an ad, that those people are going to have a good experience and they're not going to feel scammed and they're actually going to get the product that you say you are delivering. So all those things are really important when it comes to the address too. Uh, here's an advanced tip. Make sure that the physical address you enter into the business information tab in your Google Merchant Center account exactly matches the address you have on the contact page on your website. That's very important. We've seen situations where there was even a small mismatch between those things. And uh, once we fixed that, Google reinstated the account. I, I can't give you a, a comprehensive list of every single thing that might be wrong or might be triggering misrepresentation because we don't have enough time in the day. And again, there's always those unique nuances where we have to look at the situation and say, oh, here's here's exactly what's going on in this particular scenario. But those are some things to watch out for. Also, you know, look for things like broken links on your website, placeholder content where you um, aren't giving product images or you're using a lorem ipsum text or anything like that. Just anything that doesn't promote legitimacy and credibility, um, like reusing customer reviews from other websites, anything along those lines, don't do those things. And, um, and that should help in getting your Merchant Center account unsuspended. Moving on from misrepresentation, there are other policies as well, like adult-oriented content, alcoholic beverages. Um, of these, probably the most common one that we see is healthcare-related content. And this is something a lot of businesses, especially in the, the supplements space, struggle with because they may sell products that are not prescription drugs, they're not over-the-counter medication, they're not pharmaceuticals, um, but Google is not always great at correctly kind of categorizing and saying, oh, these products should not fall under this policy. And it can be really challenging if Google says your products fall under this policy, trying to prove to them that no, they don't. And so that's usually a back and forth with Google. Often we'll be speaking with our team at Google and trying to get kind of dig for information about what specific products or specific ingredients or words on the website may be triggering this policy. And there's a whole list of, of words and things that we look for and that Google provides that, um, that for sure can trigger the unapproved um, pharmaceuticals list of products that you're not allowed to advertise through Google Shopping. So you gotta watch out for that one. And then also there's something called legit script certification. So if you're a business that does actually fall under these things, you are selling prescription drugs, for example, you can go through a third party called legit script to get certified. And Google requires that for businesses that fall under this policy. And so Google looks at legit script to see if there is a certification for your domain. And it's a way of proving on the back end that you are legitimate, that you are authorized to sell what you sell, that you're not a scammer, that you're not selling, you know, bad products and merchandise and ultimately pharmaceuticals. And um, so that's something you want to go through um, if, it, if it applies to your situation. Again, for some sites like supplements websites, they might not actually um, be eligible for Legitscript because they're not selling pharmaceuticals. Those are the, the three most common policies, misrepresentation, counterfeit goods, and um, healthcare and services. There's another one that's not really listed on here, but it's basically a um, you know, website um, is doesn't have sufficient content or doesn't work properly. And usually those types of suspensions are, again, you don't have all the right um, pages on your website, your checkout process is broken, you're using placeholder images or placeholder text, it's just not ready for prime time. And so you've got to make it ready for prime time and get everything working perfectly in order to fix that type of suspension. So when it comes to how do you actually go ahead and appeal 
um, this type of suspension. It's very straightforward. Unlike with ad accounts where you write out a whole long appeal and there's a whole process of what you do and what don't want to say and what documentation you do or don't want to include. With Merchant Center, um, again, it's more simple. There's a button that you click in your Merchant Center account to request a review. That goes to Google, they review it, they come back and tell you whether or not they accept that you have fixed the problems. Now there are some times where we're also able to um, get some additional information from our team at Google about what might be causing a suspension. Can't promise anything. I can't promise that they're gonna say, here's exactly what the problem is, but we usually dig and sometimes we can get tidbits of information that are helpful in fixing the problem and uh, get making sure that you're fully compliant with Google and that we're not accidentally triggering Google's algorithm to, to think that something is non-compliant when it actually is compliant. Hopefully that was helpful to you. If you, again, if you have a suspension right now, uh, we'd love to assist. You could reach out through stubgroup.com. Let us know what's going on. We'll talk through and figure out if it's a situation that we believe we can help and assist you with and get you back online with Google. And we have different ways that we use to try and get you back online as quickly as possible. So please reach out. We'd love to have a conversation. And if you want more information like this, we'll have other videos somewhere up here that you can uh, click on, tap on to learn more about uh, Google Merchant Center policies and other policies and ultimately how to dominate with Google. So go watch another video or subscribe to our channel for more content just like this. Take care.